Hey team, it's John, JRB Tree Climbing. It was almost two years ago that I created the video JRB Guard a Hitch Foot Loop, and I built this foot loop. Since that time, I've migrated to a new version, and several of you have noticed it, and I wanted to give you the option of building the simpler variant. So to start this version, and there's a dedicated page on my website, jrbtreeclimbing.com, dedicated to the Garda Hitch foot loop and its construction, so you can find that video and these details. But this version used a single piece of webbing, but had two foot loops, so it had optional provision to put each foot in independently. I rarely, if ever, need that just for climbing. And it also had the, uh, the bend down here at the bottom. And what that caused is it, it could basically chafe on your calf. A couple of you noticed that. And so we're gonna, we're gonna park this one. Still, still works great. And here's the simpler variant. The simpler variant simply has a single loop. And if for any reason you needed to put two feet in it, you could. I'd only need that if I was, you know, uh, carrying another person up in the tree with me. I, ju I just don't need that. It also has integrated redundancy. This is what I call the best friend loop. So we're going to be building this, and I'll take you into the lab to show you in detail. Okay, so what uh, materials do we need? We need a length of webbing. The exact brand and style isn't quite so important. Typically, I use nylon or polyester. It could be flat or tubular, although with the tubular stuff, I prefer something that's not really thick. And so this is one inch tubular webbing. And what I've done is I've put on the line, I've put on a piece of hose. That's actually a 7 8 inch dishwasher hose. It connects a dishwasher to a garbage disposal you could use anything but this is really rugged stuff and it's just going to make sure that that's always sitting there ready to accept my foot the length of this is exactly double my height or almost 12 feet additionally we'll need a piece of cord this is approximately 40 inches of uh, uh, an accessory cord seven or eight millimeter as long as it is appropriately rated for these types of life safety applications and lastly, two non-locking carabiners, ideally straight gate carabiners, and we'll, we'll show you these in detail in the lab. Now, just to make sure you're aware, the garter hitch clips onto your rope, kind of like uh, a friction hitch that you clip on, and it only holds in one direction. So I'm gonna clip that on, I'll show you how to do this in detail, and of course, we can do it quietly. and I connect the bottom end to my lower bridge. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna stand, I'm standing on the rope. You see what's happening? I can, I can use this as a climbing device. We want the geometry to be such that when we raise it all the way up, as per my video on optimal system geometry, when I pull it as high as it can go, because it can't go any further due to my bridge and the best friend, your leg is roughly horizontal and puts you in position for a good size step as you climb up. And lastly, it works on a double or a single rope. So if I remove my canopy anchor from the tree, grab the foot loop. I now have two ropes. You can use this in both single and doubled rope applications. Let's just quickly put my weight on that so you can see. Plenty of content on the channel showing you how it's used. Now let's go in the lab and build one. Okay we start with a piece of webbing. You can use tubular webbing or flat webbing. You should get it from a reputable source and you cut a piece that is roughly twice your height. You're taller than me, you need more. You're shorter than me, you need less. I cut that and I singe it with a lighter and just rub it with a rag so make sure it doesn't get frayed. If you want to find the exact webbing and the carabiners and anything that I'm recommending as products can change over time, refer to my website. Look for the page on the Guard Hitch Foot Loop. Okay, so I will start, and I, I've already slipped on the line, this 7 8 inch 
piece of dishwasher hose. And again, this is optional. It's just handy to have that there so that it's always ready to accept your foot. You're not fiddling around when you're climbing in the dark. And it's just the width of my sole and will serve well in that regard. So I'll start with a working end and I'm just gonna eyeball it at around, around 30 inches off to, to the right. And I'll start and I'm gonna create a bull hitch variant on my finger. Now it's important that you use this variant of the bull hitch. Don't use a girth hitch, don't use a regular bull hitch, don't try to sew it. Use this variant. This cinches the carabiners in a unique fashion such that they will not jockey apart. Otherwise your garter hitch may be unreliable. I've folded the working end over my finger and I'm going to go around in this fashion twice. That's once, twice. I've passed around the front twice and now around the back twice. Now instead of taking it around the front a third time, I'm going to go up and over and I'm going to pass it down through these two strands on the back side. It's going to be a little hard to keep you in view there while I do so, but I, I will do my best. So I'm going up and over and then down through two strands. Okay. So when I've got that, and let's pop in a carabiner so I don't lose my, my place. When I've got that, if I want to inspect that bull hitch, I've got two strands of the webbing going through the carabiner. I've got two strands on the near side, and I've got two strands on the back side. And the two load strands go up and they go on opposite sides of the carabiner. You can see me pushing up this strand, and if I push up on the other strand, now it's granted it's underneath, but it's, it loads the carabiners uniformly. Okay, now let's talk about the carabiners. Uh, these are my favorite. They're a, a, a Mega Pacific Raider carabiners. They are an oval and they are, they're non-locking. You do not want to use locking carabiners. You want straight gate carabiners because we need these to be able to to remain pressed very close to one another. The presence of a gate may cause them to not operate properly. And incidentally, there are many different types of non-locking carabiners. These were some old ones from an old guard hitch foot loop, but they're not as wide. They're one and a quarter inch interior diameter instead of one and a half. And this just flows better. Now, if you get up into arborist diameter ropes, there are other options. So, for example, these are uh, the Omega Phantom Carabiner. I've also got a link to them on my website. And they're even larger, again, non-locking straight gates. And these work well with arborist diameter ropes over 11 millimeters. I can even get a couple of strands through there. And there are some other options as well. Here are some from uh, Kong and these work great as well. Now we need two carabiners inserted in a side-by-side -side fashion. So you can see how this one is there. I want this to be in the same location, same orientation. Just carefully put that through. Now I've got my two carabiners in place. Okay, now the last piece is to simply join the two ends together and I use a water knot. There's a dedicated video on the water knot, but the water knot is simply the marriage of two overhand knots. And I'm going to form that fairly close to my carabiner. So I'll create an overhand knot. Pardon me while I try to stay in the field of view. And then I'm going to grab the other end of the rope, of the webbing. And I'm going to pass it through my fingers so as to ensure I'm not putting any uh, unintended twists and turns. And I will simply retrace this overhand to complete my water knot. 
Again, dedicated video on the water knot. So just guessing there on my lengths, the tails aren't exactly the right height, but uh, as soon as the video is over, I'll stand up and I'll test that. Again, with my foot through the bottom of the loop, I want the top of the carabiners to reach roughly my belly button. Okay, so I'm not going to crank that tight just yet. And the last piece is what I call the best friend loop. So I have a length of cord here. This could be, uh, this happens to be eight millimeter cord. You could use seven, but you want something that's rated for uh, a life safety application, right? So you want utility cord that's at least seven uh, millimeters. And a great rule of thumb in any climbing application is the breaking strength of the material should be at least 15 times the working load. This is a 40 inch length of utility cord, and I'm going to create a clove hitch. We want to make sure our cord, by the way, is a reputable cord from a reputable supplier. Again, I've got recommendations on my website. Create the clove hitch with a single overhand loop, a second overhand loop. Place the upper one under the first one. I've got a dedicated video on the clove hitch and related hitches, but that, that's it. One more time overhand loop, second overhand loop, place the front one behind, and then I want to put them on my carabiner so that they exit in this fashion with one strand on each side. So I will simply bring that up, and there, I've got my, got my clove hitch now. And the last piece is to tie a hunter's bend. And to facilitate me in that process, I will go ahead and engage these on the line and show you how I engage them on whether it's a single or a double rope. The easiest way to do it from the perspective of the climber is to pop these on the line. You can just do it like that. But of course, in a hunting situation, you might want to open them and do it really quietly. And, and then you simply take the two strands fold it over the top, and go into only the top carabiner. That's it. That holds. Is that amazing that that, that 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 holds? But with it in that position, I can now fashion my hunter's bend. And the length, uh, and again, dedicated video on the hunter's bend. It is also the marriage of two overhand knots. I'll create an overhand knot. I'll create a second one. And the length of this loop I found to be about, about six inches or, the, or the, the span between my index and my pinky finger to be ideal. And so it doesn't need to be perfect, but a 40 inch length of cord seems to be about right for that. To make it a little bit shorter. Again, the length of this, not, it's really the length of this and the length of your bridge that dictates the whole, uh, the entirety of your optimal system geometry. Okay, so that's the foot loop. Let's show you how to engage it one more time. This time I'll do it on a single rope. You simply clip it onto the rope. Again, I'm right handed, I'm pushing it away from me from the perspective of, of the climber. I clip it on so it goes through both. I take the rope, fold it over the top one, and grab only the top carabiner. And that loads immediately, whether I'm loading it by the foot loop or by the best friend. And again, it's very important to recognize that once you load this, although you can slide it up really easily, you can't remove it when it's under load. If there's any load on this, it can't be removed. It, it can't slide backwards. It can only slide upward. And so we got to be aware of that with our, our self-rescue scenarios. If anything goes wrong north of the system and you find yourself on your guard hitch, you've got to get the load off of it in order to recover. I've got dedicated content on that. But I really like the, uh, the intrinsic reliability of the Garda hitch foot loop and these are some great materials with which to construct it. Okay, I'm going to go set this hitch and jump on it. Now that estimate for double your height as the length of cord is way more than you need. When I tuned it up, 
and I put my foot in the loop just out of your field of view and I got that tuned so that the carabiners come to my belly button well I've got I've got several feet left over here that I can trim off so let's let's start by setting the hitch and make sure we like it before we do anything so I'm gonna go ahead and come on over put it on just hand tighten those just getting those set check it again comfortable with that height I'm now going to trim the ends off so you can see I've got a nice roughly you know six inch tail here I will cut the other one at the same size and it's always good to just leave a little extra if you want it to change the length of it in the future and again I will always singe the ends with a lighter just to keep them from getting frayed Careful not to touch that while it's hot. And I'll, I'll rush over and test the whole thing. I'm gonna put my lower bridge on, the best friend. And so you can see my quadricep is slightly elevated. I could, I could work with this, but I have the option of, if I want to shorten this, this is the nice thing about having a double adjustable bridge. And you can see my design for a double adjustable bridge. But I have the option of just shortening my bridge or I can shorten this loop. In this case, because I have so many foot loops and I realize this is just a little bit more than six inches, I'm just going to tune these this hunter's bend to make this just a little bit shorter obviously i built a few of these before but you can't can't ever put rope or cord back in you can always cut it off so i always are on the side of uh, buying and tying with a little bit of extra as i did with the foot loop and as i'm doing now with best friend and when we load the best friend we don't want to load it on the bend just want to spin that around inside the clove hitch so that the bend is being pulled in a 180 degree fashion so there you have it this is the single loop variant of the JRB Garda hitch foot loop I would will be using this unchanged in my videos uh, in, in the future and I'll let you know how I how I like this in terms of finding it with my foot thanks as always